So we're going to take our sample and hold out of our CV input there. And so right now we just have a dry uh, oscillator saw wave going into input one. Uh, but this time let's go, I'm going to unpatch it temporarily from my mixer. And I'm going to go into the input of my filter. And I'm going to need another cable because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, you may be predicting already what I'm going to do, uh, going audio out to my mixer again. Here we go. Input one. There it is. It's slightly muffled because I guess the cutoff of my frequency is too low. Okay, so there we, there we go. That's our uh, cutoff frequency. Now we can hear the oscillator coming in through there. So it's the same saw wave. It's just slightly filtered. And so now let's hear what happens when we patch our sample and hold into our CV. And I'm going to do CV2. Uh, but this is basically sending that random signal or random control voltage into uh, the pitch of the filter. So here we go. There we go. And if I start to bring in the resonance of my filter, I get a very interesting sound right here. I start to lose the oscillator a little bit, but definitely gives you a different timbre on the sound. And then you just kind of adjust until you find that cool little place that you like. There we go. And of course I can speed up my sample on hold or slow it down. And the more I go away from my resonance, the more I get my original saw wave coming in. And the further I go into the resonance, the more I'm actually going straight into self-oscillation on the low-pass filter. So every so often, the saw wave sort of pipe uh, pops its head through. So that's a pretty cool effect right there. At least I think so. Um, now I can go one step further if I want to by uh, actually taking my waveform from here and then piping that into my um, CV. Let's try CV3 over here. See what kind of sound we create from that. So that's a fairly different sound than what we had before. Of course, I could always go into a different waveform if I wanted to, like I could patch in a sine wave. Just to get a slightly different flavor of that triangle wave. Yeah, the sky's the limit. You can do anything you want with these. Okay, so let me turn that down. And uh, I'm going to actually unpatch my sample and hold signal going in because I'm going to try something, whoops, a little bit different. Man overboard. Um, so we have our oscillator going into audio in here. And we have our resonance all the way up. I'm going to bring down my resonance. So I'm going to experiment with something here. So we have our dry oscillator in there. And uh, 
Now, let's see what happens if we actually do sample and hold to both the pitch of our oscillator as well as the pitch of our filter. So I'm patching into sample and hold right there. And then I'm going up into my input of my multiples um, right there. So what this is doing is it's basically going to duplicate this signal uh, three times. So top one is my signal, and then it's going to duplicate it here and here and here. So I'm going to take this now, and I know it's getting a little bit hard to see, but I'm going to go into the CV input of my, my, uh, my oscillator. So now my sample and hold signal is going into my VCO, and now I need another cable. There we go. So output of the multiples again. And this time we're gonna to go to the CV input of our filter. There we go. So we have sort of one sample and hold signal going to both the pitch of our oscillator and the pitch of our filter. There we go. And now that we have both CVs sort of set up, now I can go to town, so to speak, with my random noise. So I can adjust the level if I want to, to get a slightly different flavor. I can change the rate. Or I can change the component of blue noise going into my sample in here, my dual sample and hold. Or I can add more red noise to get a slightly different flavor. Or if I want to say, you know, no more of this noise, I want to go to the white noise, I can patch in my white noise. I can change the frequency of my LFO. And there I'm kind of getting a nice little sound. I can bring my filter into self-oscillation. That's kind of more the sound I like. Now if I had another LFO, I could actually emulate that in this particular setup. So there we go. We've got a fairly interesting patch using one sample and hold section of the A148. Um, and our signal, of course, is split twice because it's going out from the sample and hold and then going into our multiples. And then one of those is going into the pitch of our standard VCO right there. And then the other is going to the CV of our filter. So that is your basic uh, sample and hold type sound and how you can kind of set it up in a modular type environment. Um, now you'll know, you'll notice anyway, uh, going through this uh, demo that we've only actually used one uh, waveform. Lots of other possibilities. So I could take out my, uh, my saw wave and go into a square wave. And it's a little bit difficult to hear because my resonance is so high, but I bring it down about there and you can hear a little bit more of the square wave. And I can adjust my frequency. That's one of my favorite sounds right there. Or I can try my triangle wave, my, my, my friend here. So there you go. 
That is your basic sample and hold type patch uh, with a few little suggestions or uh, sort of ways that you can sort of change it. Um, and especially with a module that has more than just white noise, you can get slightly different flavors of your uh, sample and hold. Not to say that one's better than the other, because, you know, variety is the spice of life, so to speak. But uh, you can definitely get uh, fairly different type sounds coming out of this module. Okay. So that's going to wrap up this segment. Um, there's a little bit more setup going into the next section of our sample and hold demo. Um, just to sort of uh, introduce that, uh, what I'm going to do in the next segment uh, is I'm going to demonstrate the bottom portion of this, which is actually set up as a track and hold. And we're going to hear how that is different than a sample and hold. Um, there's actually a jumper, uh, which is a little kind of piece of plastic that's on the inside of this module. If you take it out from the rack, um, there's a little jumper in the back of this module that if you change its position, uh, it can actually change the function of the module as a whole. So it's got two jumpers in here, one that allows you to change the function of, let's see, well, let me explain it this way. Okay, so from the factory, the top section is set up as a sample and hold, and the bottom section is set up as a track and hold. But you can adjust it by changing the jumper so that this is two sample and hold uh, sections, or you can adjust it as you know one sample and hold, one track and hold, or you can have it two track and holds, or you can have your sample and hold on the bottom if you just really like to have sample and hold on the bottom section, and then track and hold on the top. So you can get any of those types of combinations. Uh, but in the next segment, we're actually going to do a little bit of track and hold and see how that's different. Uh, we may actually do even a little bit of demonstration uh, with something a little bit different, uh, using the sample and hold as a sample rate reducer, and hear what that sounds like as well. So stay tuned for that.